driving on coastal rural Virginia to a little town called Reedville, which I'd never heard of. But there's a warehouse full of cars, interesting cars, I'm told. It was a lead given to me by a friend. And if he said they were worthwhile to go look at, I said, no, I gotta go look at those cars. We're not driving a wooden car this time. This is a rather solid 67 Ford Country Squire. It drives like a dream. And if this car looks familiar to you, it's because it appeared in episode 13 of Barn Fight Hunter. So go back, check it out. This is the car, I wound up buying it. And here we are four years later, I'm doing a thousand miles a week with this baby. trailers ha, I know what they're gonna do they have it by the end of the week to get whatever cars are in here out you can't go much further in Virginia than we are right here there's the water and the ocean I guess is the Outer Banks beyond that but uh, we're in rural Virginia a little town called Reedville really at the end of the road the pavement ran out the gravel ran out and now we're on dirt and we've been invited here by Mike Mike, thanks so much for inviting us. Looking forward to it. Mike apparently has uh, become the owner of a, of a cachet of cars. So tell me what's in here. I haven't been in here yet. Right. How many buildings? Why are they here? Who owned it? So what took place was a gentleman in Virginia um, had the opportunity to purchase cars over a lifetime and started buying and maintaining cars here. He also had a place in Richmond, Virginia, downtown Richmond, Virginia, and some at his home. Unfortunately, an illness has taken over and the family needs to move on the property and the cars. And essentially what I did was, I was fortunate enough to purchase the entire cachet. My responsibility is to clean it up and move the cars out. I'm a car nut. I've been a car nut forever. I'm in the car business. And I will never have the opportunity to touch or feel these cars, but I wanna make sure they go to the next owner who can finish them. Nobody can do 44 cars that I purchased. So I'm going to be able to split them up and get them to new homes and make sure that they're restored and back on the road. Because as a car historian, it's just, you can't let them go to waste. Well, thanks for having us and lead us. Let's go. And that's the neatest part. All right. Um, should I turn the lights on? Ah. Oh, man. So you haven't touched anything here? Haven't touched anything. Most of it hasn't been touched in 15 or 20 years. And this is, this is, these are cars that he's collected over the course of yep. his lifetime. Oh, man. That's what I did. Now, oh, man. The, look at this. Is that, that car That's, hit I, a tree I think, or something? I think something got in the way of a straight line. Thankfully, it's, it's only a fiberglass car. Right. Sure. Wow. So here's a uh, Volkswagen-powered Porsche Speedster. Fiberglass body, which may be an Intermechanica, but there were a number of companies that made these. Some were really good, and some are, be, are collector's items in themselves these days. This has 2,900 miles uh -huh. since, I guess, since it was built. Um, it came out of Hartsville, South Carolina. He paid $650 to have it shipped from, from San Francisco to Richmond, Virginia. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. Uh, there's no date on here. Hmm, no date. That's pretty pretty cheap because I pay a lot more than that now. I know. Look at this. Oh, so it's got a built VW motor, right. hot rod, dual carbs, mm -hmm. alternator. We know it was in two, at least in 2010. Oh, black plate car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he had to buy that because it's saying a black plate car. Right, right. Does it have a top, I wonder? It's got a cover. So when speech has got to be too expensive uh, for a, an original one, they went from 50,000 to 75,000, 100,000, 150, 200, 250,000. It made sense to come out with a, uh, like Cobras, a fiberglass version that people could enjoy the look of the real car for a, a small portion of the price. So we have a diesel rabbit pickup. These are the cat's meow. I mean, like there's two more down there. You know, I'm up in Maine, I got a friend. I've got a friend in Maine that would like to buy this right now. I can say, <laughs> and it's got Scirocco wheels. Well, actually, GTI wheels. 
And so they're all complete. You know, we thankfully, hope, we, we hope complete. You know, too many people take them apart, and then they take another car apart, another car apart, and then you just have parts. Well, all over but, but look down the middle. Yeah, Where did all the motors come from? Yeah. So was it 280 SL? 280 four speed. That one is so original. It appears this the brake booster has been removed, but everything else about it, down to the last hydraulic line, is still attached. That's probably original paint. We believe it is. Wow. It looks like 55,000 miles. I'm not quite sure if, I, if I'm reading that right. This car never should be restored. Holy mackerel. All right, so next to us we have a, a Porsche. That's a, that's a 1960 356 Porsche Cabriolet. People are gonna freak out over this episode. Really? This, this is exactly what Haggerty customers uh, love. So a 1960 1600 Porsche, it's got a fact, well, it's got a hard top, whether it's factory or not, I'm not sure. But we don't know. Obviously the soft top, Yep. luggage rack, so this is not a Speedster. The Speedster windshield would have been lower and a Speedster would not have had roll-up windows. The Speedster had side curtains. Look how complete it is. Yeah. You it's know what's got, amazing? All four hubcaps are on top. That would take a lifetime to find. There's, there's an oil change sticker in here, so I'm gonna see. I know everybody that criticizes Tom Cotter for not having a flashlight. <laughs> you, want me, you want to carry my flashlight? I've got one. So there's an oil change sticker here. It says 628, the date, but it doesn't give the year. Warrington, Pennsylvania is the town it was serviced at with mobile oil. There's no, this says 4,800 miles, so it's probably 100,040, uh, <laughs> something like that. And here's the, the moon hubcaps. <laughs> now, I think the, the problem area with these cars was in the front here under the battery and it, and it looks to be really solid. I'm gonna, if you, I'm, I'm gonna just pull this wheel out if that's okay. Yeah, sure. You break it, you buy it. You got it. <laughs> Look at that floor. No rust. It's under the battery and under the spare tire where uh, there would be rust developing. Hmm. Pretty solid car. So it looks like it's got 104,000 miles. I wonder if this is original paint. Let's see if we can find any rem, uh, remnants of, yeah. This has been painted. See, there's the black, but there's a, a bead of red on there. So this has been painted. It looks to be a metallic, metallic red. So you can tell this is, this is an early 356, not the later ones, like a C. Uh, a C would have had a small bolt pattern. This has got the lar larger bolt pattern, like a Volkswagen Beetle. Hmm. Nice. Okay, so this is a uh, Volkswagen rabbit convertible. Rabbit convertible. Yep. Cabriolet is what they called them. Yep, yep. He loved he loved rabbits. Yeah, well, I, I got rabbits too. everywhere. They multiply. Yep. <laughs> so I guess we'll go just go down with yeah. one side. Oh, my goodness, look at that. <laughs> wow. Is that not amazing? Jeez. So here we have an MGTD. Uh, could be, I guess, from 49 to 53. 53, but this is a 52 based on the title. There used, used to be a 1250cc four-cylinder uh, four engine here. Uh, this is the toolbox. You put your jack in there and wrenches and stuff because obviously you needed them when they broke down. But this has a, a, a V8 Chevy. Distributor in the back, four-barrel Rochester. Generator, look how close that generator pulley comes to the original radiator. You, you couldn't get uh, two dimes in there. Uh, original exhaust manifolds are going down. They had to use some flex pipe. What kind of transmission does it have? Don't know yet. It's a manual gearbox. Probably, a, it looks like a, maybe a three-speed Chevy box. Look at the steering wheel. Yeah, an Impala steering wheel. So it's got five bolts, five bolt original wheels in the front and four bolts in the back. So that's probably a, like a Chevy Nova rear end. Four bolt, six cylinder Chevy Nova would add uh, four lugs. Uh, dual exhaust? No, single exhaust. Really? What kind of hot rod is this? Yeah, single exhaust, wow. And it's got a brake booster in the back, mounted way back here. Leaf springs. Wow, you're right. What a, what a blast this would have been playing with Cobras. Look at the shifter. Yeah, I'm looking at that. Is that not wild? It's just kind of a side shifter, like an early Healy. Look at the bend in it. So it's probably like a, an early J.C. Whitney floor shifter. Okay. You know, the problem was 
it was a good idea until you got on it and then the chassis flexed like you know it was just a skimpy little See, chassis. Well, it's still wood under the chassis here yeah man now that's a clean truck with wow. a hard with with a shell which you never find but they put a sunroof in it uh-huh that's right so a, so this is not a diesel this is a gas volkswagen rabbit pickup manual transmission um, clean seats you clean the suck up nice now look at this a body factory colored looking top very nice vehicle so this is probably uh 81 82 yeah early 80s clean pickup bed you see the original paint is still back in there so they you know they didn't haul around brake drums and stuff with it yeah i've got friends that like these vehicles very much and you know look at how clean the body is I, i'm imagining the floor is just as clean it is so it's got 108,000 miles on it which uh, is a baby yeah it's a baby who knows how long it's been sitting here is there a sticker no uh not on this one yeah well, that that's a that's a good one you know and, and i think uh you know a lot of the people know Barn find hunter, you know, we find Cobras and Ferraris and I get excited about those things, but we find Volkswagen pickups and I get excited about those things too. And I think that the, the antique hobby movement is going in this direction for young enthusiasts to become involved in the, in the sport. This one's so original. It's still got the plastic tire cover shell. Yep. So it's a four door. It's a four door. It's a diesel. Diesel with no motor. Right. The motor's sitting over here somewhere. I and mean, that's a Rabbit GTI. Do you mind if I step on that bumper? I don't care. Now, you guys with the camera could have a problem with this. So that's just a four-door rabbit, and there's nothing there's wrong with it. I used to race with a, against a guy that raced a four-door rabbit at Bridgehampton. Good car. But, of course, this is a first-gen GTI. So no engine in this one, but it's probably here somewhere. It's here somewhere. It's an 84 model. So this is this looks to be original paint. It's very, very original. Wow. So this is that with a cinnamon kind of uh, cinnamon red. They only were available, as I remember, three red. colors, red. It was red, black, black white. and white. And then they became silver. Yep, you're right. So this has the GTI the seats in there. It's got the golf ball shift knob. Uh, let's see what the mileage is on this. 85,000 miles. So it's got the, you know, the, the seats front and back, all original. Oh yeah. Sunroof. You can see that there's mildew on the doors, but that's easily clean, cleanable. So it's got drums in the back, discs in the front. And you know, this was the car that changed America's opinion of what a, a, a muscle car could be. This was a, the, one of the first pocket rockets. After the, uh, I guess the Mini Cooper uh, S, 1275S, back in the 60s, this was the next car, front wheel drive, a car that anybody could afford, good gas mileage, but handled great, had a lot of power, and, and this brought on a whole new generation of muscle car in America. If you want to call this a muscle car, it was a, an Econo box. Uh, car and Driver magazine, Road and Track magazine loved these cars. And when I went out to buy my second new car, my wife and I, we didn't buy the Rabbit, we bought the Golf version in 1985, which we still have. So we still have a GTI we bought new. 35 years ago. All right, so another Volkswagen pickup, another one with a, a cap on it. Factory color, standard transmission, and a diesel. Yep, which is even more desirable oh, for some. Absolutely. Yeah, because these things are running a quarter million miles. Easy. 102,000 miles. Nice tan interior, very period correct color. Saddle interior, tan outside. Very nice. All right, so here's one of the most unusual sports cars ever built. Uh, people said it looked like a, a guppy. So look at the nose on this thing. It had controversial styling. It was made by Daimler, D-A-I-M-L-E-R. It's an SP250 or 250 SP. Uh, I see there's a factory shop manual here. Daimler was a, a company in England that made large cars, limousines, large sedans. It was the Queen's car. Queen's car. And they were not known for building sports cars, but you know, back in the '60s, that's where the 
market was going. So they developed a fiberglass sports car. It was a two and a half liter V8. I'm gonna show you what that V8 looks like here. It's a Hemi V8. And if that looks like a, a, a miniature Chrysler 331, three, you know, uh, 392, it is. It's a miniature version of a, of a uh, Chrysler Hemi engine. It has two SU carburetors. Uh, and they sounded great. I mean, the cars did not perform particularly well on the racetrack, but man, they sounded so cool out of dual exhaust. And really, you know, if you were racing this or competing against a Healy or an MGB or an MGA, this would clean the floor with it. Uh, fiberglass body, this has a fiberglass hard top. Now think about that. Think about this for a minute. You know, a small V8 these days is a five liter. This is a 2.5 liter, half the size of a Mustang GT engine. Um, it was used as a police car. Yeah, I've in seen pictures of that. for a number of years. Yep. Wind wing, uh, accessory hard top. That's got a four speed gearbox. Looks to be a complete car. The seat's a little bit ripped. So, this is a red car, black interior, red piping. It's, and it's all, you know, keys are there, all the gauges are there, Smith's gauges, padded dash. So again, this should never be restored. This car should just be enjoyed. You know, the problem with restoring these cars, you could be upside down at them the, the moment you touch it. So you could enjoy this car as is. See, it's got it's kind of strange styling in the back here too. It took 50 styling and it yeah. took 60 styling and it took fiberglass from the Corvette world um, yep. and the V8 Hemis. It, it was crazy. Yeah. You know, kind of odd American 1960s styling with these little fins here. Uh, you know, think about a, a Cadillac fin of 59 or so, a scaled down version of that. What year is this? Maybe early? This one's 60. 60, okay. Look at all these. Now, you could tell this guy was an enthusiast. He saved his Hemmings Motor News, 1990, 1991. You know, only, only idiots like me and he do that kind of thing. This must be his literature closet. Is a Mercedes-Benz owner's manual for some vehicle. Probably for the car right behind you. 250 SL. I've got one of those 2D here. 2D ADSL. And yeah. here's all the factory, you know, service bulletins and pretty cool stuff. So this car, originally from Rhode Island, last registered in 1980, is a Mercedes Ponton, a 220 Ponton, which was the style of the car at the time. This was a car, a sedan version of a 190 SL sports car. Kind of subdued styling, very round. And then after this, they went to the fin tail, which was a, a little sharper, uh, crisper. Uh, it probably has a four speed on the column. It's a standard transmission, four on the tree. Nice looking gauges. Uh, 30, it says 33,000 miles. I guess it could be. It has been painted. It was, see, people that didn't do window, remove the windows during a, a paint job could never quite get the uh, masking right. So you could tell if it's something's been painted or not if there's rubber that has a little bit of the color on it. So another Daimler. Now look at this stuff in here in the trunk. So here's a California car cover. Oh, it's Hemmings Motor News. It hasn't even been unwrapped. Winter 2001. An atlas, a boat, oh, I guess this is a, a boat uh, map for boating. Mirror, probably from this car. So here we have another oh, another Daimler 250 SP. Did that one have wire wheels on it? The other one did, this okay. one does also. This one has wire wheels. The one that we have as a parts car has solid wheels. Mm -hmm. A little bit of footprints from a raccoon that's busy in this car. Hopefully it's not in there. <laughs> Red car, red interior, all the gauges, the dash is intact, four-speed gearbox. Now, you know, this is, a, I guess, a two plus two, but boy, you had to have short legs. Maybe kids could fit in the back seat there. This one was unusual because that one has a roll bar in it. This one has a roll bar. I saw that. So radiator, uh, okay, the radiator is here. I thought it was removed. You can see that it's got a logo on the generator. Again, another... Miniature Chrysler V8. I've actually seen some American hot rods, Model T type track roaches with this motor in there. And people freak out. Oh my God, a Hemi, a baby Hemi. A baby Well, that's Hemi. what it is, a 2.2 liter baby Hemi. They called Hemi. it a trout mouth front. Right. 
Yeah, you could tell the, the grill is the looks only a mother could love. What's amazing and what's, what's so smart on his part, everything's inside. Oh. The weather has not touched any of these in years. Look at the chrome while it's still there. Right. It's a great, great yeah. opportunity to start again. Yeah, you're a lucky guy because if he was sitting outside, oh, gone forever. It'd be a graveyard. Uh, another MGTD. Uh, that one has chrome headlights. Yeah, so this one with the V8 has got chrome headlights, but actually they came with painted headlights, and the chrome was an option. 1250 cc XPAG engine it was called. I know because I've got one of these. This is probably the original color of this car was, which is a kind of a greenish gray, but it was painted British racing green on top of that. Another toolbox and a mouse has been in here. Two inch and a quarter SU carburetors. This was a car that turned America onto sports cars. It was uh, a one that a lot of GIs came back from England and either brought with them or bought when they got to the States. You could drive it to a racetrack, race it, and then hopefully drive it home again. So this one is a Jaguar Mark II, maybe? Uh, it's a 3.8S. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was designation was a Mark II. I think it was a Mark II. I thought the Mark II was a little smaller. I don't know, it might be on the back. It says 3.S, 3.8S. So, so this was a- 66. A sports car, 66. Look, you can see the porcelainized exhaust manifold, double overhead cam. Is that a 3.8 liter? Mm -hmm. Look at that wooden dashboard. Well, how clean it is, and look at the condition of it. Amazing. And this car's gonna clean up phenomenally well. I'm gonna sit in here for a minute. I gotta, gotta soak it in. So it's got big, plush, leather bucket seats. Look at that dashboard. It's got 45,000 miles, which I guess could Based be. Based on the condition, maybe. Could be. Look at that dash. All the gauges, toggle switches. It's got a blau punct. It's got that proper musty smell. <laughs> oh, and you know, there's a key, it says Jaguar. Now what year is this Porsche? 68. 68 Targa. Is Nine, it 911? It's a 912. 912, okay. You know, until about six months ago, nobody cared about 912s, now they're the now hottest they're thing going in the world. Crazy. Is it a Sportomatic or anything? Or no? uh, You're opening the door for the first time like I haven't yet. Wow, now it's a stick shift, four speed. Look at the interior, look at that seats, dash. He had an amazing eye for cars. So this is a, uh, oh, here's another badge, Automobile Club Milano. So I wonder if he got these cars out of Europe, wow. No, most of them had titles uh, from either the Virginia area um, two were in California, mm -hmm. and a majority of them uh, in this East Coast area. So this is probably missing, yeah, it's missing a little logo that I can see the holes back here. So that's obviously been painted sometime in its life. It's a silver, and right here would be 912, probably a 912, uh, it's not fuel injection, so it wouldn't, wouldn't have been an E. But 912 was a four-cylinder version of a 911. They say it was the, the, the ultimate 356 would be a 912. It, it took the 356 te technology one stage further, more sophisticated, uh, in a new body style. It looks to be a good solid car. And these cars, you know, nobody really wanted them just a few years ago. And now, man, people really appreciate these cars. Look at the interior. That could be, those seats could be cleaned up beautifully. And it's a five gauge dash, which is quite unusual. Uh-huh. 80. 80,000 miles, let me see that. 30,000, so I, t I take it that that's a 130,000. Probably. And this car's been painted, there's evidence of that along here. Silver Targa, which means the roof panel comes out, can be stowed under the hood. This brakes in the back, this brakes in the front. So this was probably the most sophisticated four-cylinder uh, four air-cooled motor that Porsche made before putting all their emphasis on six-cylinder motors. Here's the hubcaps for the Porsche. One, two, three, four. Let, let's see if it turns over. Let me just see if I can spin the uh, crankshaft on here. No, I can't, but I bet there's no, unless it sees, there's no reason that thing wouldn't spin, probably start up pretty, easy, pretty easily. See, it's got side, side, I guess, um, two 
uh, downdraft, probably Solexes, and they look like aftermarket air cleaner. And you know what the horsepower was, I really can't say. Well, it's a pretty amazing find, and you know what? We're in the smaller building still. There's, there's a larger building still to come. Jeez. All right, so we have no light in this building. <laughs> Ooh, an F-150 and a GM, a Jimmy. Are these yours as well? Everything's mine. That's a nice truck. Oh yeah, I'm a Ford dealer. I know. This is gonna be easy a for me. A short wheelbase, four This was the drive. only one that I recognized and knew how to right, appraise. Right, wow. Is it low mileage? Don't know, didn't look, didn't uh, care. Yeah, you gotta turn on the dash. Yeah, didn't care. So it's a manual gearbox? Yeah. Cassette player. This one's 100% original. Whew. This will clean up so nice. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. I bet that doesn't have 30,000 miles on it. Four wheel drive, manual gearbox, and we can't see the mileage because the odometer is digital, so you have to turn the truck on and obviously the battery's dead but it's got you know the, the trim factory chrome wheels uh is a, the a v8 five liter yep five oh so that's a, like a five liter mustang yep. motor i guess exactly fuel injected i bet this is low mileage Whew. i'm not a truck guy i would i would love this is this a short truck. bed yeah jeez you should make this your company truck right <laughs> i'm spending time with you know, like this and this, because, you know, there are Haggerty customers that love these vehicles. So here's one. So a race driver friend of mine, who you know, Elliot Forbes Robinson. Sure. He was, a couple of years ago, he was looking for one of these for his son, because the thing is to get these and lower them down. You can slam them, you know, so these uh, old, there's a Jimmy. So yep, this means, one's a Jimmy. So it's got automatic. 86,000 miles. It's got a phone. Oh, yeah, this was, this was, this was a big deal back in the day. Let's see, how do you release this? Look at that. You could you could list uh, commonly called numbers there. This was a big deal. You had to walk around with a battery pack back in these days. And that's for sale too. Yep, everything's for sale. So it's got a V6, so that's a little hot rod. Yeah, 2.8. Uh-huh. It's AC. Very nice. Okay, so now let's get to the uh, the stuff we're more interested in. What you, okay, we'll start with the Volvo. Uh, nice Volvo wagon, automatic. Obviously, it's original paint. I don't see, I don't see markings of uh, repaint. It's not a turbo, or is it? Uh, so I can't say that for sure. It doesn't appear to be a turbo, but what do I know? I'm gonna probably be scorned by a number of people. It's got factory alloy rims. 17,000, so I assume it's 117,000 miles. The leather seats need a little bit of work. Now here's a car I know something about, a VW Beetle, and I will, don't tell me the year, I think I can guess it, let's see. Large tail lights, which means it's newer than a 60, it's 61 or newer. Uh, dished wheel, so it's had some either rust repair, or probably damage repair up in the front. It's got a new hood, so I'd say it's probably a 63, 64. See, uh, with that door handle, uh, I'm saying it's 65, 66. 67. 67, okay, new fenders, okay, brand new fenders lying there. All the fender welting and hood welting in there, so it looks like a lot of the parts that you'd need to fix it are here already. That one's got 15,000 miles by the look of it. The wear on the pedals, I'd say it's definitely 115,000. The, the area of concern with these cars is the battery, and you can see back here, there is in fact some cancer. There's a little bit of a hole, but this, this is common and really acceptable in a Volkswagen Beetle of this vintage. So this, this car could be revived real easy. You can buy all these carpeted panels here from, from aftermarket firms. Even new seat covers, which it needs. There's the horse here, by the way. Door panels you can buy. So even a home mechanic can glue in these pieces, put on seat covers, put on door panels, and like in a weekend, have the whole interior revived. This is a hard top. It does not have a sunroof. And everybody with the Beetle tried to fix it up with these steering wheel covers. It's got great bones. Yeah, yeah, it does. Okay, well now we have going from the baby to the to the big brother. This is a 930? Uh 911. 84 a model. A 911 with big big stuff welded on here. Actually, we don't know if it's factory or not. I have to pull the codes yet, but I haven't been able to see it. 
Yeah, well, maybe I can let you know right now. <laughs> well, that's got big flares, and there's not a lot of evidence that they've been added. Was there a, a non-turbo wide-body car? Yes. Well, that could be it. 16-inch wheels. So that's that appears to be metal, and, and, and the undercoating is uh, consistent throughout from the from the lip all the way in so it doesn't appear that these were added on and it's an air-conditioned car hmm. and what liter is this you know um it's i'm thinking 2.8 in mm -hmm. uh 84 but it could be a 3.2 i'm not sure uh-huh hmm. so it's got big flares in the front and back it's got this uh whale tail which was there you know, the iconic porsche and the reason that was that was put there was that air, rather than slipping down and ultimately slowing down the car, there was a, it was a clean brake. And it was a clean brake for the air, so it just kind of shut up and, and the car was not being held back by aerodynamics. So it, it, it ultimately made a swoopy car into a sharp tail. A guy named uh, Cam, K-A-M-M, K -A -M -M, invented around World War II the Cam tail, and this is an extension of that. Uh, this is all rubber. I think the US required this be rubber in case pedestrians got hit by it. I guess a factory black car. Yeah, we believe it is. Yeah, and if it was painted, the windshield was taken out of it. Miles on this one is 60, is 80, 87,000. No, no 67,000. 67,000 miles, there's some chips here. Uh, that, so they, either the, those light chips are a lighter primer, like a gray primer, or this car was maybe silver at one time and they just removed the windshield. It's got cigarette butts in the ashtray. Looks a little complete to me. Wow. It's got a five-speed gearbox. Seats have mildew on them, but they could be brought back to life, and, and the carpets look great. Wow. You, you'll have this thing sold before you even know what you're doing. So this is last on the road in 2000, Virginia, October, I mean, I'm sorry, December 2000. It's got a tool kit, which I guess is original, including a touch-up stick. Schwartz means black. So if this is the original tool kit touch-up stick, then this car was a black car originally. And I don't know if these port, these are uh, West Germany. So this is all original stuff. It just looks odd to me. Those wheels don't look big enough to fill the fenders. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here we have a, an early 911. Is nope. it 911? 912? 912. Oh, it's an early 912. Okay, 912. See, this is the logo that was missing on the other one. And the old Porsche script along the back. The earliest 911s had a little Porsche script up here. And it said 911 almost in a script, not in block type. That would have been 65, 65 and 66, I think. So this is a, a stock body, stock wheels, five bolt lugs with a, a steel rim. And the hubcaps is one, two, three. There's three or four hubcaps back here. Uh, mileage is 16,000, so let's say it's 116,000. I see there's pieces of the dash are missing. The gauges are all there. It's probably an ashtray that's missing. You have to I go up front yep. and see the rest of it. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Oh, this is a Cruncherino. Ah, <laughs> Little okay. boo-boo. Got it. What year is this? 68. And I could be mistaken. It could be a 67. We're not sure yet. Right. This is the one, one of the ones that we don't have a title exactly number matching. See, I would, I would, if I owned all these cars, I would be so in, mm, inclined. Which one am I going to keep? Which two? <laughs> Which nine am I going to keep? Honey? Which I'm tenor gonna, am I going right. to keep? Honey, I'm going to keep them. Which 12 am I going to keep? I'm, I'm not getting rid of any of them. So how, how many did you buy? 44. All right, so this is what I do. I, I would tell my wife I bought 24. <laughs> <laughs> and then when the 24 is sold, okay, okay. That, that project's done. So we have a 356C. How do I know what to see? Well, this is a Porsche 356C because there's a C back here, first of all. But the C was kind of a transitional model, like that 912 was kind of the ultimate 356. This 356 is has many of the uh, beginnings of a 911. Uh, you could tell a, a 356C, one of the reasons it had two air vents in the back. It had 
uh, five bolts, but it didn't have the large bolt pattern like we saw on the early 356s. It had, they were close together. So not like a Volkswagen wheel, the, the bolts were way out here, they're closer. And the C is the first one to have disc brakes front and back. So it's got disc brakes front and back. I actually owned one of these for a while and they're a great car. Why did I sell it? Why? Uh, beautiful dashboard, look at that. You know, like that could be cleaned up and, and never repaired, never taken apart. Um, this this was a, uh, the, the tack, so you can see where the you know, yellow and the red line would be. So it kind of red lined at 5,000 RPMs. But Porsche made its name by beating bigger, more powerful cars because they could maintain a higher RPM consistently around a racetrack and not have to come on and off the throttle as much. So, uh, you know, they weren't as fast on the straightaway, but they were a lot faster in the corners. And that's when you saw Corvettes and Porsches racing competitively against one another. 14,000 miles, so I guess 114,000. It's got a Blaupunkt AM FM radio. Again, the hubcaps are scattered about in here. There's the body company that made uh, Porsche bodies called Carmen Carrossery, which was the body company. And I guess that was either that was either in Austria or Germany. So here, here you have the best 356 you could buy. It had the old styling, but it had four-wheel disc brakes. It had a big motor. I think it was 65 horsepower, maybe. Um, and, you know, here we have a car that's it's a 65. Nope, this is a 64. 64. Okay, but it's a C. Right. Uh, so this was the last. Okay, 64 was the last year of the C. And it's uh, 55 years old. So here you can see the early fuses that Volkswagens and Porsches had. Across here, the little uh, kind of ceramic fuses. And if that little wire was melted, well, the fuse had a short somewhere. Here's uh, the missing tack. Not from this car, though. I guess from one of the other Porsches. Toolbox, a jack, spare inner tube, and this is where they rusted out again. The battery's still in there, right over there, so I don't know if it's the, the, the floor under there is solid or not. And this car, the, the, obviously it was painted. Yeah, it but, has evidence of repaint. But I'd say it, it was probably a silver car to begin with. Is where it's peeling away, you kind of see silver paint. Yeah, that's that's a good one, man. Uh, okay, uh, 84. 635 CSL. No, uh, 633 CSI. 630 CSI, okay. Which was, you know, such a beautiful car. And these cars are just beginning to become appreciated now. Started off with, a, I guess, a 2800 and went to a 30, 30 CS. Then the racing version was a, a CSL, L stood for lightweight. Uh, a great six-cylinder overhead cam motor, fuel injection. They were great race cars. They were great street cars. They had such amazing looks. The body, you know, look how thin that is. That's the A pillar, the B pillar, and the C pillar. They were the thinnest you could make them. So visibility was great, but still it had this greenhouse that was just like out in the open. Perfect. So this has a uh, five-speed manual gearbox. It's white with... Navy interior, sunroof. I don't know, what year is this one? 84. So it's got the, the shock absorber bumpers on it, which... Which are hidden. Yeah, they're hidden, but you know, the German versions of these cars were, were much prettier. prettier because this is like a, a big six by six piece of timber in the front, which was, you know, that's what you had to have for US specs. But the, the European cars just had a slender bumper was actually a much prettier one, but it wouldn't have made U.S. specs. Now you can bring those cars in because those cars are more than older. 25, yeah, they're 35 years old. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're older than 25 years. You can bring this the uh, European versions in now. So this was January 2000. This was last on the road. And that's when cassette, cassette tapes were big back then. Remember cassettes? There's a whole bunch of them on the dashboard here. What an eclectic taste this uh -huh. guy had. Man. All right, so that's the end of it? That's the end of it. Man, what a morning. <laughs> oh, we got a Mercedes 250 in the two door. Garage on there in the back. Okay. I've only seen that car once.
So who's mining this shop? Oh, yeah. I've got a GM. Yeah. 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 How long have you been a dealer? Uh, it'll be 25 years this year. I worked for Ford for 12 years. I think that's the window that's we're going to look at. That's the window, okay. Yeah. I think, yeah, he said right behind the tree. There's only one car in here? Yeah, thank goodness. Oh, there it is. Yeah, okay. So. Yeah, it's going to be hard to see. But, but it looks like a 250 Mercedes. It's a 71 250. Yep. Manual gearbox? No, automatic. You know, those cars just don't rust out. It's probably a pretty solid car. Did you see the four cam Porsche motor in here? Oh, shut up. <laughs> so let me think, which car, if you said, Tommy, you could buy one of these cars. All right, so let me show you the picture so you can, so you can really think. No, just of the cars today. Oh, okay, okay, just so the cars, the cars today. today uh, <laughs> the 250. Oh, that was a nice the one. 280. Nah, it'd probably be a Porsche. I, I, then it's got to be the silver 64. I, yeah, but there was that other one. The Targa? I, or not the kid car. No. Nah, wasn't there another 356 out of the building? The convertible. Convertible. The 60. Yeah, that, that would be it. All right. 60 Cabriolet. I'm not a convertible yeah. guy. Okay, so now the other cars, uh, a Griffith. I mean, Griffiths are intriguing cars. 1966 V8. Made on Long Island right. out of the TBR. Yep. There's Tigers. Three Tigers. Another Daimler? Another Daimler. Daimler. Jeez. The two GT6s, another, uh, it's a 219, so it was the smaller motor, uh, pontoon, Mercedes. Yeah. That was in absolutely spectacular shape. The Lotus, the 68 Lotus SE. You know, that's probably, it's a Cooper or a Roadster? Roadster. Yeah, probably, probably, the, Lo probably the Lotus. Yeah, I'm, I have a soft spot for that. Then there's the Alpine with the Chevy 350. <laughs> well, Mike, thanks so much for spending the Oh, God, it was a man. pleasure. Yeah, and, and good luck with moving these cars. What a what a, an amazing find. So are you going to advertise these cars? Um, we're going to put it on our website, um, which is, which is Ash, ashboroughford.com. Ashboroughford.com. So don't call us. <laughs> you know how to get a hold of them now. Call me, ashboroughford.com. Um, we're in North Carolina. We deliver. Um, we're going to sell them all. Uh, and I, I just want to get them to good homes so they get back on the road. That's the most important part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's what... that's. That's what the former owner's dream was. Well, you're a good caretaker. Man, thanks. Thanks good for pleasure. sharing this stuff. Have a good one. Happy hunting. Here's another Ponton Mercedes. You can, this is what I was telling you before, body color um, hubcaps, full, full hubcaps, and, and these were always the color of the body. So here was the baby hubcap. This is probably more appropriate for a diesel. The diesel probably had the mini hubcap the larger hubcap I showed you in the back is probably for a gas car or a deluxe car. You see this has no, no trim or anything like that. Automobile und Touring Club Tyrol. So that would have been a, a, a German driving group, I guess.